What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash JT. It's been a while since I had a chance to break out my Intellivision t-shirt, but you know what? Any chance I get, I'm going to do it because the company has just been the gift that keeps on giving. And today is no different. We have updates regarding the status of our good friend Tommy Tellerico and the playbill for the Nashville Symphony and Video Games Live and how Tommy can't stop lying. It's not a lie, if you believe it. That's a very famous quote from George on Seinfeld, talking about a situation where if you lie enough, people just assume it's the case. Many people attribute it to the big lie, going all the way back to Adolf Hitler. Or a lot of people also say it about Donald Trump. I guess you could also say the same about Tommy Tallarico. This type of personality, it's the person that will say whatever they want to say, being completely oblivious about what the actual truth behind any of it really is. Credit to user D List Celebrity providing this image of the playbill for Friday, January 26, 2024 at the Nashville Symphony for Video Games Live. And you see a list of all the people involved with it and then you have on the right side a gigantic column for Tommy Tellerico being listed as the creator. Because, of course, the guy's so full of himself that he has to take up an entire half of a page to let everyone know just how important he really is. But what does it say? Well, let's go through it. Tommy Tellerico has worked in the gaming industry as a designer, product manager, producer, writer, hardware executive, game tester, and heads of both music and video departments. He produced, co-created, wrote, and co-hosted three award-winning syndicated and network television shows, as well as created the worldwide touring sensation Video Games Live. I feel like I could spend an entire three hour live stream just on that section alone breaking down pretty much everything that's said there being a lie. But let's not get stuck there. Let's continue. As an accomplished musician, Tallarico has written music for video games for more than 30 years. In 1994, he was the first musician to release a video game soundtrack worldwide, Tommy Tallarico's Greatest Hits, Volume 1 on Capitol Records. He has since released 18 video game soundtrack albums. He has won more than 50 industry awards, including a Lifetime Achievement Award during the 2012 Game Developers Conference. It's interesting how it's written, where it's hard to decipher what's true and what's not true, and how things he said could be easily explained away. Are we going to go into the gang awards that were giving Tommy all these awards, and then it got found out that gang awards was created by Tommy, for Tommy, to give awards about Tommy? To Tommy, are we going to talk about that or are we just going to say generic things like the industry has given him awards? Because that's the type of stuff that people like Tommy do. They use different words to make it sound like what they have accomplished is more important than what they have actually done. His top titles include Earthworm Jim, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Disney's Aladdin, Spider-Man, and Metroid Prime, which has been disproven. Multiple times. I'm not going to spend an entire video talking about that. You can check out SmashJT.com for the article and all the sources here if you'd like to go over that information yet again about how it's not true that everything has pointed to he has not worked on Metroid Prime. In fact, when he started working on it, it turned out that they didn't want him, need him, or use him, and he's not even in the credits for it. But yet he still says he worked on Metroid Prime because... It was a popular game that sold pretty well and people recognized the name of it, just in line with everything else that Tommy lies about. As well as the top selling game franchises such as Sonic the Hedgehog. Was he the first person to work on Sonic the Hedgehog from America? Remember that one, Tommy? Pac-Man, Guitar Hero, no you didn't, Madden Football, Mortal Kombat, Time Crisis, Unreal, James Bond. First off, why are you going through a list of like 50 games here when most of these have been disproven that you worked 
not a thing on. Many of them were your studio where other people under you made the sounds for. And then some of them, maybe one or two, you actually worked on. Why would you even bother listing all these games when we all know it's a lie? Seventh Geth, Knockout Kings, Test Drive, Scooby-Doo. Why would you list Scooby-Doo? WWE and Twisted Metal. Tallarico is also the creator of the beloved Roblox Oof. Holy crap. This is what made me want to make the video. He takes credit for the Roblox Oof sound in the playbill talking about why this guy is important. I don't know if you guys checked out that H-Bomber video where he kind of exposed every lie about Tommy making him to look like the fraud that he is and exposing that for the whole world to see and showing off how he didn't create the oof sound. It was Joe underworking Tommy who may have made the oof sound from Messiah and had nothing to do with Roblox at the time. And Tommy's taking full credit for someone else's work for a game that it was never meant for and saying that this is what I did, and I made this sound for this popular billion-selling game? Yeah, right in line with Tommy. The creator of the beloved Roblox Oof sound, which became a worldwide sensation, and arguably the most famous pop culture sound of the 21st century, garnishing billions of views from memes and YouTube videos around the world. Come on, Tommy, are you really doing this after it's been completely disproven? After all the lies, after you've been shown to be a complete fraud, snake oil salesman, loser, scammer guy that you are, you're going to still write this as fact. I guess it does fall right in line with the whole saying of what I started this off with. It's not a lie if you believe it. And that's exactly the mantra of Tommy Tellerico. It's not the secret. It's not all these weird things that he believes in. It's just lying over and over and over again until people are just beat down by it and just say, fine, whatever, I don't care. I guess you did all that. I'm not going to even bother fighting it. Even after it got disproven, whatever. I. It is what it is. That's what Tommy wants people to do. It's kind of in a weird way just like what happened with Gerard the completionist and talking about the lies and trying to manipulate the truth so that people would look at him as not being the bad guy anymore and then try to forget about it by not talking about it anymore and then pretending nothing ever happened and then come back to the limelight and then talk to everyone about how great you are and say all the things you were proven wrong about beforehand. It makes no sense, but apparently it's working. And none of this even addresses how this entire playbill does not even mention the Intellivision Amico and the complete failure that it was, which obviously you're not going to list a major failure, but ironically, the Intellivision Amico is the one thing that showed Tommy to be the fraud that he is and exposed all the rest of his lies that he continues to perpetuate with stuff like this. I've made a ton of videos about the Intellivision Amico and Tommy Tellerico specifically. I was the guy that didn't like the Intellivision Amico initially. And then Tommy came over and talked to me, invited me over to his house, drove me in his car, told me how amazing it was, and I believed his lies because he struck me as a genuine person. Which I guess you could say the one thing he has accomplished in his career is becoming a professional manipulator. He could sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves, Tommy Boy reference. He was a master salesman because he could say whatever the hell he wanted because he believed it. It wasn't true, it wasn't reality, but it was what he said and he said it with a smile and damn it did Tommy have charisma. It was just oozing off of him when he talked and I guess once he got found out, it became this repulsive, disgusting persona that he was. But in reality, back then, you didn't know any of that and you just believed him because he was such a smooth talker. After everything comes forward and he still takes credit for the Roblox oof sound. After H Bomber Guy's video getting 11 plus million views on the YouTube platform, people continually talking about what a complete fraud scam artist Tommy is, exposed for all to see. He still moves forward with a playbill telling people how amazing and accomplished he is, even though none of it 
is true. I'm going to leave it there. If you want more information or references, resources, check out smashjt.com. I will link this article in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, you stay smashing. Myself and uh, my sound designer, uh, Joey Curris. It just keeps going like this. We start to tweak the sound, each individual sound. So again, and, and oof, we might have spent, you know, a half hour trying to figure out exactly which way we should have pitched it down and what thing we would have taken and this and that. Smash, smash, smash.